All right, everybody, we're in the Nature Center today, and I thought I'd take you into the Star Lab. This is an amazing room. Um, here we go in the Nature Center. And the Star Lab here. This is set for a January Northwest Iowa day. So I've got our, we have a curtain on here. I just closed our curtain. And you can see the constellations lit up by a black light. I'm going really slow to let my phone kind of catch up here. But what I need you to know is because the Earth turns, we end up seeing different constellations at different times of the year. Okay, now I'm on the ceiling. I want to start you in the north sky because no matter what time of year it is, we always see the constellations in the north. They're not always in the same spot in the north, but they always, I always tell my, my groups, um, you have a, a, an important question to ask mom and dad and that is which way is north? Because if you can find north, you can find what's called our circumpolar constellations. Those constellations that um, look like they move around the North Pole. So here we have here the large constellation there that's taking up most of the sky is called Draco the Dragon. Draco always falls between the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. So I'll move over here to those. Now you see the Little Dipper is on the left of the screen there. The end of the Little Dipper is uh, the North Star. The North Star is the, the end of that handle. That never changes spots in the sky for us because it sits directly over the North Pole. So the North Star, again, is the end of the handle of the Little Dipper. On the right side of your screen, you might be able to make out the Big Dipper, and there's all these extra lines, right? The Big Dipper and all those extra lines together is called the Big Bear, or Ursa Major. Guess what the Little Dipper's called? That's right, Ursa Minor, Little Bear, okay? Now, the Big Dipper does look like it revolves around the sky. Again, it's always in the north, okay? So Big Dipper, Little Dipper, the Dragon Draco in the middle. Let's go up a little bit farther here, okay? Um, this is going to be Cephas, he's the king, and I'm looking at that house-like thing um, that's filling up your screen. That's King Cephas and his queen. Oh, it's so hard to see. It's a W. It's a W. Our light, it's hard to do with the phone here. Um, the, the queen's name is Cassiopeia. All right. They are in the Greek story about Perseus, and I'll tell you that in a minute here. Here we go over here. This is called the Northern Cross or also called the Swan. All right, we've got a comet there. I'm going to switch positions to show you this side. Okay, this really, really long, huge constellation here is a river, Eridanus the river. And our family favorite, Orion. Orion was a hunter, and you see the three stars that make up the belt of this hunter. Now, if you go down from his right knee, you get my favorite constellation, Big Dog. Guess what? It's a hunting dog. That's my favorite. The very, very bright star on the hunting dog is called Sirius. It's only eight light years from Earth. Yes, it takes eight years at the speed of light to get to the Sirius. Okay, so that's Big Dog. If you go off of... Um, Orion's shoulder here, you're going to get this simple line. This is Little Dog. So Orion had two hunting dogs, Big Dog and Little Dog. I always kid, it looks like a hot dog. A little hunting hot dog or a wiener dog maybe. I bet they could go down a rabbit hole. All right, these two lines to the, the left of Orion, these two lines are two brothers. Their names are Gemini. Um, their individual names are Castor and Pollux, but the constellation is Gemini. Um, it is one of the, the zodiac constellations. Okay, 
Um, I'm, I'm going to stay away from the, the ones on the ceiling, I think. Well, you can see that. You can see that. That's Perseus. He's part of this great story I want to tell you. Perseus was a superhero. I know it looks like a Y, but he's a superhero. He has shoes that help him to fly. He has um, a, a helmet that makes him invisible and a shield. And they were all given to him as gifts to help him fight Medusa. Okay, so in this story, we have Perseus, a superhero. We have the queen, which is the W and so hard for you guys to see. We have her king, her, her husband, King Cephas, in this story. Cetus, the sea monster, is in it. And also, which we don't see right now, it's actually a southern hemisphere. And also, um, uh, 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 maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. Okay, so the story goes. Let me focus on Perseus here. Perseus was a superhero. And he needed to do a job. He needed to kill Medusa. Medusa's my, uh, my favorite villain. She has hair made of live snakes. And if she looks at you, you turn to stone. So he needed to kill Medusa. He found her sleeping in her cave and used his shield to see her reflection because he doesn't want to turn to stone. He was able to cut her head off with his sword. He got onto his trusty steed, his flying horse, Pegasus. Oh, that would be the other one that's in the sky that we don't see in the Star Lab. But Pegasus is similar to the Big Dipper. It has a great big rectangle in it, and there is hardly any stars in that rectangle. So he gets on Pegasus, and he drives, he drives, he rides across the sky to an island. And what's going on on this island is there is a woman. Her name is... Um, Andromeda she's a princess and she is chained to a rock okay well the the history of, of how she got chained to the rock is her mother um, the Cassiopeia that W you can't hardly see on the ceiling there Cassiopeia the W um, was bragging about her beauty and in the story the sea ladies got mad at her and they sent a monster Cetus to the land to eat people. Okay, bear with me. Um, the people run to King Cephas. Here's King Cephas. And they say, Cephas, get rid of this monster. It's, it's killing our people. And Cephas says, oh, there's only, Cephas finds out there's only one way he can get rid of the monster. He would have to sacrifice his daughter, his only daughter, Princess Andromeda, to make up for his wife's boasting. And so the question is, did he do it? Did he sacrifice his only daughter to save his people? Yes, he did. And that's Andromeda that is chained up to a rock when Perseus comes by. So he needs to save this beautiful maiden who he intends to marry. And he can't get close enough with his sword. He has no bow and arrow. He's up in the sky over the ocean on his Pegasus. How does he kill the creature and save the princess? He takes Medusa's head out of his pouch and he says, beast. And Cetus looks at him and he shows Medusa's head to the beast and turns the beast to stone. You got it. All right. And then he lands and lives happily ever after. And I hear all the kids in my group go, ew, to the romance. All right. Um, another story I really like. Orion has many stories. Um, I'm going to tell you the one that I was taught. And, um, you know, stories are interesting because you write it down and it stays one way forever and ever. But these stories weren't ever written down. They were told by word of mouth, so they've changed over the years. So I'm going to tell you my version or the version that I was taught. Um, Orion was a hunter and he had a girlfriend. She was a hunter too. Her name is Diana. Diana's job was to put the moon up at night. And so she drove her chariot across the sky, put the moon in the sky. But she was always late doing this. And her brother Apollo got tired of her always being late at for work because what she was doing is spending all her time with her boyfriend Orion hunting all day. So she's always late. 
So Apollo said, that's it. And he took Orion down into the, the ocean. And he turned Orion into a rock and he threw it in the water. He went to his sister, Diana, and he said, Diana, uh, you want to shoot bow and arrow with me? I'm better than you. Well, being a sister, she can't deal with that. She said, of course you're not. Let's go shoot. I'll show you. So they go down to the water and she's shooting different targets and Diana shoots um, right on every time. And her brother Apollo said, I bet you can't shoot the rock in the water. She draws back her bow. And if you know about refraction, this is a super hard shot. She releases the arrow and shoots her boyfriend right on. She shoots the rock right on. It turns, it loses the spell, turns it back into her boyfriend. And she's so sad. She's lost her love. And she puts him in her chariot and drives him to the sky and places him with three beautiful jewels for his belt and, of course, his hunting dogs. Big dog, Canis Major, and little dog, Canis Minor, at his feet so he will never be lonely. Now keep in mind this rotates so um, in, in real life in the sky. So they're not always in this exact location or lineup, but they're always together. And if you follow Orion's belt, follow it down in a straight line, you hit heart, the heart of Big Dog. I love finding Big Dog, he's so bright. Again, follow his belt down in a straight line and look, you hit the heart of Big Dog, his hunting dog. All right. There we go. All right, I'm black lit here. Thanks everybody for joining me. Uh, Hopefully we have some clear skies to come and you can practice this outside yourself. See you next time. Thank you.